Welcome, welcome everybody. We're going to be talking about how to build your coaching practice. So I'm going to share with you how, um, what, what are some of the key elements to build, a, to market yourself and build a practice. Now, there are some key elements. Uh, one, one thing that is very important before I start is that most of us who are coaches or becoming coaches, we do that because we love helping people and making a difference in the world. Do you agree about that? People agree about that, that we choose being coaches because we want to make a difference. How many people love selling? Really love is your passion, selling. Anybody here? No. <laughs> most, most things don't go together. So I learned over time that if I didn't sell myself and my services, I wouldn't be an offer in the world. People would not find me and I would not be able to make a difference. So you can be great at making a difference, but if nobody knows that you are available and ready to do the service, nobody finds you, that will not, you, will, you will not be able to fulfill your vision. Is everybody with me? And you say, oh, Damien, we already know that. We already know that. But how we uh, do whatever we need to do if we don't feel like doing it? So the first element here is to shift the way that we look at marketing and selling our service. If we are going to see it as, oh, I don't want to do it, uh, this is not me, I'm not a salesperson, then it's a problem because people are not going to find that. So I have to struggle with that. I need to let that go and, and think, okay, how uh, I can do, what I can do, what I need to do so people will find me. So this is the invitation today to think, okay, what do I need to do so people will find me? Is everybody ready? Now we have good news and bad news. Good news is that there are strategies that work for people to find you. The bad news is that requires work, effort, and investment of time, energy, and money. So if you want to get people to find you, that will not happen by magic. Nobody going to come to knock your door. You need to make that happen. And I want to share my personal experience. We have here a few people that I know for many years, particularly Lila, we know each other, we have been friends for 30 years. And both of us, we get to this country with nothing. Like we came from Argentina and I came with $500, 450, something like that is what I wrote when I came to, to, to the United States. So I didn't have any money, any investment, nothing in the bank. So I had to start from scratch. So I had to work really hard. So what I'm saying that is because we had to work hard. And if we want to make this work, we need to work hard. So you need to invest time. You need to invest money. And this is a concept that many people don't get. To make money, you need to invest money. And you need to invest money in a coach, in your website, in, uh, in marketing. You need to invest money. So if you don't invest money, it will be very difficult that um, you, you are going to be successful in your marketing efforts. And investing money includes um, starting with hiring a coach. What an idea, working with a coach. <laughs> you know, like a lot of coaches don't work with a coach. You want to be in the practice, work with a coach. Get somebody to make you accountable in planning and organizing yourself. Be sure that you have a good website where people can find you. These are the basics. And, but I am sure that uh, you all have some questions, something that you have been thinking since you graduated. Most of people here that I am seeing are graduates from my programs. Some graduated this year at USC, NAS, in my virtual program, um, different programs that I am teaching. And you're starting, and you're starting your business. So let's talk about some of the things that uh, you may want to start thinking. And before doing that, in the chat room, I want to ask everyone to write a question that you may have. What question do you have when you come here today? You know today is about building your practice. What question do you have? What is in your mind? What would you like to explore today? And with that in mind, I'm going to share for five minutes a PowerPoint, and then we are going to have breakout rooms and a dialogue about some of these ideas. I want to share with you first. I mean, while I wait for you to write in the chat room some of your questions, something that you would like to learn in the session today, I am going to share with you 
a couple of um, slides and this um, I will share with you also later the, the slides. If you want to, I will be happy to share with you my slides. So this is about building your coaching practice and the idea is in the future, if you want to be successful, if you want to have a coaching practice, if you want to live from coaching, and that can happen, but they require a lot of investment of time, energy, and also money. Um, most coaches don't work full time as coaches. So my experience is there is only a 15, 20% of all of the coaches that I know that do only coaching. Most people do coaching and something else. Coaching and training, coaching and consulting, coaching and facilitation. So there is all, from everybody that I know, I would say that only 20% of, of the people work only as coach, doing coaching and only coaching. Most people do coaching and something else. And in my personal formula to build my business, I have this element. One is a clear vision, where I want to go, what, it, what, what I wanted to accomplish, a good plan. You know, this is the thing that we do in coaching. We work with our coach to have a vision where we want to go. We have a plan to make that happen. We collaborate with other people. Um, we cannot be successful alone. We need to collaborate. So for example, I was seeing in, in, in the program that I was teaching that somebody has a website and people were providing feedback about that website. Or I saw somebody was working with new clients. I was asking to the participant of the program, the colleagues, okay, what do you think about uh, working with this particular uh, group of people? So all we Think about who are going to be your partners and who are you who are going to be collaborating with you because this is not something you do alone. From the coach that you work through mastermind groups where you work with people and, and, and brainstorm ideas together, um, you, you need to find out different strategies related to getting help where you get help for your practice and you help others in building their, their business. Hard work. This is very hard. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. If you, need, you. You need to invest a lot of energy in this. If you are not willing to do that, that may not happen. So I, I want to just share that. You need to really invest time. And I want to I wanna be honest with you. I didn't like it for the longest time. I resisted it for a long time. And then when I gave up and I stopped resisting it and I stopped uh, fighting with it, I started enjoying it. So now I enjoy it. Now, I wouldn't believe that I would enjoy it, but now I do enjoy some of the activities related to, to marketing that I'm going to share with you today. You need to believe in yourself. Very important. We know in coaching, we need to believe that we can be successful because if you don't believe that you can make it happen, it's a self-fulfilled prophecy where you may not be able to accomplish uh, what you want to accomplish. And, and finally, as I was saying before, invest time and you need to invest money. So my objective here is identify some limiting beliefs that may be in your way. We're going to talk about branding, niches, websites, social media, videos, uh, books, and, and public speaking, and developing your own plan. Now, all of these can be a program that may last six months. And there is such a program offered by the International Code Federation. And uh, I would recommend everyone here to go and do it. It's $300. And for $300, you get involved in a program that lasts around a year. And they teach you all of these things with experts in the topic on all of these topics. Here, I'm not an expert. Here, I am telling you about my personal experience, about how I done that is working, and what is not working. But if you're interested, the International Coach Federation has a program last a year. You can wait till next year to do it. Or you can do it this year, it's finishing in October, but you can watch all of the recordings and all of the activities uh, from the whole year. So that's, a, that's a, a possibility. So I want to ask you about the limiting beliefs. What can be in our way about marketing and mm -hmm. our selling our services? Because I can be talking here for one hour, you can go to a program for nine months, but if you don't identify what is in your way, like in coaching, you, you may not make this happen. So you need to be very clear about what are your ideas about selling, uh, how are you in your own way, and what can be happening for you. Now, I would like to do a brief breakout room now, very short, where you talk to a colleague about you know, what, um, what do you think maybe in your way 
But then I think if they're doing a breakout here, we go, we don't have a lot of time. Let's hear from a couple of people. Let's hear from a couple of people. What, what can be your way of making this happen? Who would like to share? Yeah, Damien. Uh, I notice what comes up for me as far as getting in my way immediately when I think of uh, like reaching out to like friends or people that I know um, and I'm requesting something in return for my services. Um, so it's like I'm trying to sell something to receive money um, that doesn't feel good, that feels uh, yucky. Yeah. Yeah, this is the way that we all, most of us feel about it. And what we can do about that? What we can do, how we can do it? What uh, different way to look at this? One way would be, oh, I am asking for a favor. That would be one way. So I'm selling my services, selling information about next program. I am asking for a favor. What's another way to look at this? Yes, Cookie. So a very smart person told me, if you don't charge, you don't have any value. So if you charge little, then your value as a coach is little. And so it's a question of feeling that I need to charge to show that I'm good at what I do, even though I might know it, that I'm good, but the perception is if you don't charge, you're giving your stuff away. Yeah, and, that, and that's a challenge because many times, particularly in coaching training, you are not charging because you are in the process of learning and people may not value the space. And you know the people from cohort four, from the virtual program, that I, I got an organization and I match you with the participant from that organization. Some of them really appreciated and value your time and did a really great process with you, but some of them didn't. Would you agree with me? So you will have a mix of people, but some will really appreciate the time and the space and some may not appreciate it because it's free. So th that can be tricky. Nevertheless, can be a good uh, strategy to start when you're starting uh, like in the program, you don't charge and you charge less. For example, one strategy, and I tried this with my mother, who's also a coach, when she finished the coaching program, uh, we were talking about what she could do. And I said, send a letter, Damien, what you were talking about, send a letter to all of your friends, colleagues, everybody that you know, and tell them that you are finished the program and that you're ready to provide coaching services. Particularly, she is also a psychologist. And I know there are a couple of psychologists here. What is a different activity than coaching? So let them know that now you're not only psychology, but you're also coaching. And you have a special package where instead of charging uh, $200 and 50 per hour, you're going to be charging only 100. So this is a half price package. And so that can be one way to start. And it worked out for her. She got three clients and with the three clients, she started getting other clients. So it, it, it was a really good way to, to start building the practice. Uh, and then it's good to identify that we are asking for something. The question is, can we also give something? So for example, one of the things that I am doing is in my newsletters. Like I received a newsletter for 10 years almost. When I hired the first person to work with me in marketing, the person told me, you need to have a newsletter. And I said, I don't have time to read anybody's newsletter. If I don't have time to read anybody's newsletter, who's going to read mine? Nobody's really going to read mine. And I don't feel like doing it. So to me, 10 years, now I have a newsletter. And uh, people read it. And uh, it's a good way for me to give something. So when people get the newsletter, I may be offering uh, a program so I will let people know that I'm doing the coaching program and the supervision program. But at the same time, I am offering free sessions, free demonstrations, a free webinars like this one, um, articles, resources. So the idea is that you want to, to feel what you can give to your community. So you're not only asking, but you're also giving. So Damien, that's one way to look at it. How you can look for creative ways where you request or ask for something, but at the same, you give something. And, and interestingly, I did in the last uh, month a program called uh, Bootcamp 21 Days Instagram Bootcamp. I'm trying, I'm still trying to figure it out. What's extremely challenging. Anybody here work with Instagram? Anybody? Yeah, no? Yeah. Instagram can be a great place to find coaching clients. 
can be a great place. Now, I am not looking to build my coaching practice. I already have a lot of coaching clients. I am not interested in new coaching clients. I am more interested in getting clients to come to my programs, my trainings, coaching training and supervision training at this time right now. But uh, I do believe that if you find the right way to do it, it can be very interesting. So I did it would come. And I, do you think that I was really eager, willing to spend these 21 days doing activity for 21 days, even in Instagram? I didn't want to do it. And because I didn't want to do it, I put myself to do it. <laughs> this is my challenge. <laughs> 21 days where you're going to understand how this works. So this is the invitation. So I'm still learning and I'm still looking for ways. So we need to push ourselves and put ourselves in places that can be uncomfortable to learn new things. And one of the things that I learned in Instagram, they were saying, you need to make a request and deposit. So every time that you uh, look in Instagram, you should be in selling, selling your services or your activities. And at the same time, you need to be offering something that needs to be balanced. And, and I look at my Instagram, who I have somebody who managed it for me, and I, I didn't feel that there was a balance there. So I said, okay, I think we need to do something here. There needs to be more balance in the Instagram. So I want you to start thinking about this way. You are requesting, you are offering, and you are giving. So in that way, you keep that balance. And the other way, Damien, is to think, okay, I have something valuable to offer people. Yes, I am asking for something, but at the same time, what I have to offer is it's something of, of value. So for example, let me give you a cookie. Let me give you, can I give an example with you? I will use it as an example. Yeah. Um, cookie came to the program and I said, okay, I want to ask people to help me to find people that they can benefit from the program. And I could think, oh, I am asking something to Cookie. But Cookie, at the same time, she offered that to other people. And now Nagesh and, and, and Nate are here because of Cookie. And at the same time, I was feeling, oh, I am asking something to Cookie. But Cookie is also contributing and making a difference in Nate and, I, and Nagesh. Because at the end of the program, they're going to thank Cookie for being in the program. Am I wrong? I hope not. <laughs> Not at all. It's been wonderful. What, what, a, what a boon. Okay, so, so that so 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 that. And they're going to recommend other people, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Is that when you recommend, when you invite people, if I invite you and you invite other people, you are also the, making deposits in your relationship with other people. Can you see that? If you provide something of value, if you recommend somebody to do something of value you are in some way making deposits on the relationship that you have with others. So Damien, this is what you wrote, is exactly what happened to all of us. But if the invitation is if you look from a different angle, it's going to be easier. And I think that we don't want to come from a place of selling, but from a place of partnering. Okay, how, this, how you can benefit from that? Yeah. Where, yeah. where is a win-win? Where is a win-win for everyone in this situation? Okay, but well, thank you for being in this app because that's in the background. Mm. Yeah, Cookie, you want to add something? And I, I want to uh, just a quick comment. I have to say that when you do this, it has to come, um, it has to be authentic. It has to be something that, because I was so transformed by your program and with all our cohort that are here, that um, I wanted to share it. And so the people that I know and, and uh, are good friends and many old friends, I thought this would be good for their lives as well. So it was a it was really from a place a profound place, not just going okay, you guys, you need to do this. So let's talk about branding. Now I have done many programs on branding. If you have never done anything around it, you maybe look into doing at one point some sessions like the ICF program. I will give information about that later. I have not done it, so I cannot say how great it is. In the past three years ago, I did a similar one. Was really good. Uh, but they have a whole section on branding. And branding is understanding what is your promise of value? What makes you unique? What makes you different? Um, so you need to have something that differentiates you from other people. Uh, it's interesting in the, um, in, in the program that I was doing on Instagram, they were showing you a picture of a theater and they were all um, black chairs and there was a, a yellow chair. And they call it, it was in Spanish, the program, they call it La Silla Amarilla the yellow chair. So when you look at all of the chairs, you can distinguish one that was yellow. 
And the metaphor that they were using is in, in the competition, there are many coaches. In which way you are going to be different? In which way you are going to be that yellow chair? So what do you need to do to find your unique uh, uh, way of being as a coach or what will make you different than other people? So you need to know um, what will be your brand. It's like, for example, for me, I did some work on branding and I, I decided that my branding is, um, a, I am a world citizen worldwide, and I work worldwide. So when, when people think about me, I want people to think of somebody who work in the whole world. And before I did it in person, now it's all virtual. <laughs> but for many years, I traveled all over the world. So my friends, my colleagues, my clients, they know that I am somebody who works worldwide. And then I look at my car and in my car, you will see my, my logo that is a, a world. Then if you look in my, my space here, I have one world, the map in the background. You say, well, can you see? These are small things that about your branding. So these are, you're, you're, you're seeing the details now, the secrets, <laughs> the secret of my practice. You know, you see that there are these small things that you look that maybe consciously or unconsciously people can relate you to this. So this is my brand. It's about working worldwide with people all over the world. So when people think about me and they work with diversity issues or cultural issues or particularly somebody who speaks Spanish, they may think of me because of that. So you need to find what is your branding, what makes you unique. And then you may want to look at your niche. And your niche is what is your ideal client? Uh, and many people struggle with that because they want everybody to be their client. Uh, and, and some people believe that. Some people don't believe in niches uh, on the concept of working with a particular group. I do believe that a coach who is starting, if you have a particular unique niche, it will be easier for you to get to know you. Um, for example, one of the thing that I am doing is other than working worldwide, is working in supervision. So this is my passion. And I have been doing a lot of work on coaching supervision. So I look in, in the coaching profession, people need to think about coaching supervision, then they think of me because I have been doing so much work on that. So now my niche has been coaches interested in supervision. And I do a lot of activities around supervision. So this is the, the people that I am targeting and this is the people that I am offering my services. So you want to think about who you would like to be your niche. Who would like to be the people that you work with? So for me, for a while, was in LA County, a non-for-profit. So for several years, I was targeting non-profits in Los Angeles, and I was offering coaching and leadership training. And I put a lot of energy on that, in going to meetings where the HR people from this organization were. So I was looking at terms of um, discussion that they are here, what is their business, um, what is their relationship. For example, here are some dates, some niches for some coaches, relationship and dating, health and fitness, money, financials, um, can be sports, can be a niche, a group of people that you are targeting that you're going to be working. So you are very specific in what you sell and people know you for that. And so I think that that is a really good strategy for you to consider if you have not done that yet. So sometimes I do an exercise on niches where people can start thinking about that. For, for today, I want to ask you to, to consider, to start thinking about it. Um, and I want to jump to a website. I think it's very important for everyone here to have a website. And, and here are some key elements of a website. One is it has to be clean. It has to be with the language of your niche, basically, with the people that you're working with. Uh, you want to have a video introducing yourself. You want to have a call for action. You want to invite people to do something. Uh, you may want to offer a free, a free product, maybe an article or, an, or a book or a video or something that can be of value for people. Maybe a blog where you share um, information and articles and testimonials from people. So these are some of the key elements of what you want to think when you think of a website. Uh, anybody has a question about websites? Yeah, Lila. So I come, coming from psychology, in psychology, we do not ask clients for testimonials because it's um, 
it's unethical. You only ask money, ask for money against your services. Um, how, how, as a coach, how do you ask for a testimonial without incommodating your clients? Okay, that's, that's a good question. First, ideally, you want to ask for testimonials after people finish working with you. Yeah, when they think so, this is not in the system. And, and by the way, everybody here who come, come to one of my programs and graduating from my program, not my current students, I would like to ask you for testimonials because this is a good way to keep fresh your testimonials. Um, so everybody who's here who has been in one of my programs, and you have heard that, I even ask after we finish the, the, the programs, I may even ask, please, uh, when you do the evaluation of the program, please write a testimonial. Um, so it's completely ethical. What, is an, what can be unethical can be if the person feels an imposition and if you are doing it during the process. Because during the process, if the person doesn't feel like doing it, it, may be, it can be a conflict without a need. So it is completely ethical and appropriate Lila, to ask for a testimonial to a, a, a client after you finish coaching. And of course, the client may say yes or no. Do you ask verbally or, or yeah. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be because most of the time, not all the times, but most of the times, clients are very happy with what they have done and they have learned in coaching. Okay. So, a very happy client will be very happy to do that for you. Because if coaching works well and the person has breakthroughs in their lives, they will be very happy to share. Uh, and, and people here who have worked with coaches, like for example, I don't know if you have done that for your own coach, Lila from the program, but I, I'm sure that Carlos would really appreciate if you provide that to him. Mm -hmm. Can everybody see that? So, so it's, a, it's okay for people who have finished from, from NAS who are here, for the virtual program, um, or Center for Nonprofit Management, Michelle, we have you here. So feel free to go back and to the to your past clients and say, oh, I hope you're doing well. Will you will be okay for you to, to write a brief testimonial for me? Hmm. Yeah, Nagesh. Damien, this may be too much in the weeds, but uh, it would really help in terms of, you know, if you're setting up your own website on the one hand, if you go online, it feels easy. But once you start doing it, it's not, I mean, like you said, to build what you want. And it doesn't have to be now, but if either you or others in the group or a cohort have resources or ideas or suggestions, it'd be really helpful. Yeah, and you know what, I guess the good news is that you have an amazing cohort. And I am sure that if you ask with people who are interested in doing that, okay. they, will be, they will jump to support each other to help with ideas. Now, I hire somebody to do it. I invested money and I highly recommend that you do that too. You get a professional, you work with a professional, somebody who knows what to do, and then you get somebody else to do that for you. Now, I also went and I took a class about websites. So I don't feel that I need my webmaster every time that I want to enter something in the website. So I took the class with the, with the, I, with the Los Angeles Library. Los Angeles City Library has a program to train people for free on WordPress. Oh on WordPress. So if you go to, uh, to Los Angeles City Library and look for free courses, you can take a course on uh, WordPress and learn how to do it by yourself. So I did it once. I was not a very good student. I need to do it the second time because I didn't learn the first time. So it's not necessarily easy to learn to do all of that stuff. But that is a great free resource. And I highly recommend everybody here that you learn the basics about WordPress. So you hire somebody to do your WordPress, but then you do your own thing. So let me show you briefly. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my website. So share my, you see my, oh, I don't know. What did I do? Something wrong. What happened? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is my website. So when you start the website, I wanna show you a couple of things. The first thing is, first what come up is a program. Well, this is, this is what you don't need to do. 
you have something that is old. That's not good. <laughs> That's already passed. That is telling me I need to go back and change that banner because the program already started in September. But then can you see my picture with the banner in the, in the, in the, in the back of the wall again about the branding? Can you see that? So there is consistency with the branding and the message. And here I have the programs that I am doing. And, and then here are my four services that I do. I do training, coaching, speaking, and resources. So here you can see the different sections. This is a little bit about us, who we are, speaking. I have videos where people can go and look at different videos. Here in training, I have all of the different trainings that I am teaching. In supervision, in, in coaching, I have the coaching services, the coaching trainings, supervision, the same thing, the coaching and the conferences that I have organized in the past, contact. Now, if we go to the, the, the first page here, there is a video presentation. Let me share with you. Can you see it? The Global Consulting Group is a leadership training company. We provide leadership training all over the world in more than 50 countries in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Our specialty is coaching. So we train managers. Okay. So here you can see you want to have a video too. Can everybody see to get an idea? It's like a video presentation. This video, I think that I, I has, it's already four years, I think three, four years. You need to renew it every three, two, three years. If I do it now, it will be different. But you want to have a video introducing yourself. You know, okay, this is who I am, this is my company, this is what I do. Do you hear that in that video? Again, you want to hire a professional to do that. You can do it yourself but you may want to hire a professional. So you can see that you need to invest money. You start adding one person to the website, one person to your video, but this is how it works. This is what you need to do. So when people find you, they get a sense of um, what you have to offer. Any questions about websites or what you have seen? Yes, uh, Cookie. So the question of simplicity, minimalistic and simple to go, or make it visually enhancing. Uh, that's because if you have to really do a big thing, then it becomes not only more expensive, but it's confusing in people. You, the visual it, are important. The simpler, the better. The simpler, the clearer, the better. That's my recommendation. And I have been building my practice for 20 years. So I had 20 years there that I wanna show. Um, but you can, I'm sorry, not 20, 30 years, sorry. 30 years of working since I moved to the United States. So I have a lot of information to share, but you want to be clear and clean. The le le less is more here. Okay, less is more. So I want to share with you a couple of more things um, about, let me see, where is my presentation? Here we go. And then I will go to your answer, to your question. So these are key elements of the website. So everybody here, you want to look back to your website. You want to get colleagues, friends to give you feedback. If you have one, get people to look at it and give you feedback. Next is social media. Now, social media, you need to invest in social media. That's a way that people are going to find you today. So like the website is like a card of presentation. It's like when I send people to the website, it's okay. I want you to learn about what I do, go to my website. So you will learn about me. I get some people and some business through my website, but let's say that is only 30%. 70% is through word of mouth or, so, or through social media. Now there is Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. These are the five that I am using. But over the years, I, I started one at a time. I started first with LinkedIn. I started with that. And my goal was, okay, my goal is to get to 1,000 contacts. Okay, and that was around, I don't know, eight years ago, seven years ago. And now I am in 11,000 members, 11,000 contacts. But I started with 1,000, okay, that was my goal. 
And then it's okay, what, what do I want to do next? I want to work with Facebook in my website on my page in, in Facebook. So I want to start using that. That is also a good source. But now Instagram is a better source than Facebook. So if I had to choose between Instagram and Facebook, I would ask you, okay, learn whatever you need to learn to be able to use Instagram. Twitter, many people use it. I never, ever was able to get into it. I sometimes tweet things, but Twitter is something that I personally never uh, spend much time. And YouTube, for a couple of years, was my emphasis, only YouTube. And I was doing videos and videos, and I have now like 200 videos in YouTube. And, and I do believe that that is a really great investment, looking at YouTube and, and downloading videos and doing videos for people to get to know you. Um, so if I can recommend anything here is be sure that you spend time in LinkedIn, in uh, providing also value, not only inviting people to do things, but also providing uh, information, resources, uh, and the same thing in YouTube. So videos is the newest trend, I would say, not so new right now, like it was maybe a couple of years was more than now. But uh, you also want to think in um, book, writing books. Like I, I wrote five books, now I am writing a couple of more books. And you need to have marketing materials. You may need to spend time in um, getting some uh, nice materials. Now, before, people used a lot of uh, brochures. Now, people use less. I had a lot of brochures that I couldn't use this year because with COVID-19, I couldn't share any of the brochures that I had printed. So it, it go all to waste. So that's sometimes what happened also in marketing is that you may invest some money and then you need to waste uh, material. So I decided that I'm not going to be printing anymore. Also in conferences, I have booths in a conference uh, and I had to share with you, I hate having a booth. I hate being in a conference and being sitting there and having people to come and meet, having to talk about my businesses and my services and my coaching training and my supervision training, I didn't like it at all. But it worked out. You know, people came. I got a lot of people coming to my supervision program as a result of me talking to people and inviting them to come to the program. So we need to do things we don't like. Can everybody see that? So I share my own personal experience. I didn't like it at all. And I'm going to keep doing it, even though it's not enjoyable for me to be sitting. And Damien, what you were talking before about feeling, you know, that, that is always in the background. You know, I am uh, asking people for something. But, you know, I said, okay, this is the value. This is something that they're going to later come to me and tell me, thank you, Damien, for inviting me to do it because of the value that I got. So if you believe in the value, you're in a good place. That's the key. You should believe in the value that you have to offer. So let's uh, use the last few minutes here to answer some of the questions that came up. Um, okay, so here we have, what is the best timeline to build a practice? What to start with first, next, in terms of marketing? So Jerry, based on what you have heard so far, I will start uh, first, I will say, okay, if you want to spend some time and money in branding, finding out you know, who you are, as a, uh, who is, what is your branding? What is your logo? What is the name of your company? That can be a good place to start. If you don't have that, you may want to start there because that is going to inform how you are going to build your website and your social media. So you will see, if you go to my YouTube site, if you go to, you see my website, you will see that there is consistency in, in, the, in the branding, in the message. So you go to YouTube, you go to Facebook, everywhere you go, you will see me with a wall, with a, with a map in the, in the background. So, so you need to have that for consistency. What colors are you going to be using? What are your favorite colors? Um, so, so you need to have that before you start going to your website and to social media. Uh, so when you have the branding, then you go and you have your website, then you go to social media. You need to be doing something. You need to be in action. People are known to knock the door. You have a lot of different things that you can do, but you need to know that you're investing every day or every week sometime in, 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 in marketing your services. Uh, what I do a lot also is presentations. So I do a lot of presentations. So that's another strategy. Uh, ask colleagues, friends to invite you to do presentations to different groups. 
So you present on coaching skills or you present on something uh, related to coaching, um, communication skills, you choose a topic that you know, or that you feel that you can uh, talk about, and then you uh, invite people to receive coaching from you on that topic. So you build relationships, uh, doing workshops. Um, sometimes now is, with COVID-19, everything has to be virtual. But for example, going to public libraries in California or in the, in the United States, going to the public library and offering doing uh, workshops in the public library. I have done that uh, at the beginning. Now I have, through word of mouth, I get a lot of invitations. But if you don't have invitation, you may ask people to, um, to consider you to do presentations. Or you may ask your friends and colleagues do you know anywhere that I can go and do a presentation? Do you know anybody who would want to have a free presentation where I can talk about the topic and then at the end you share uh, your uh, coaching services? Can, can everybody see this, this as an activity? Uh, that, that can work really well. So you may consider who do you know that can invite you to uh, do a, a session, a workshop. 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It has to be long, longer. Um, Alex, how can you encourage folks and the professional development and allocation to use it on coaching? Well, um, people need to understand the value. And many times people don't even understand what is coaching. So a good, a good strategy for that is to do a free demo. So more than talking about coaching, coach them. Or even when you are telling them about coaching, you coach them, you ask them for permission. But you ask them for permission. Because once I knew I was in a conference, I was a person from a different uh, industry, was a speaker's industry. And she started to coach me without me, my permission. And I feel it like an imposition. So you have to be very careful. So I, and I gave her feedback about it. So if you are going to be coaching somebody to show how coaching works, you need to ask for permission. And you may say, you know, it's easier if we have a practice. Would you mind? Uh, talking for 20 minutes and I will show you how coaching works and you do a demo so that can be a good way the other way are the testimonials that is what you want testimonials because other people are sharing their experiences so this, this can be two ways that uh, help people to understand the value of what you have to offer um, Michael how does one best define and reach a specific coaching market when you need to when you need to define it you need to work with a coach Definitely, you need to work with a coach somebody to help you to think through uh, what is the niche, what is the market that you want to work on. So these are the things that you may not do alone. Uh, and Nate, it's better to partner with a larger business or establish independent practice. Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would say that it's better to partner with a big company before you go by your own, by and work by yourself but it's going to be difficult to be hired because these companies are not going to hire somebody with no experience. Now we have here Rach. Rach, maybe we can ask you, you know, at ASAP, you know, you work for a company that do exactly that. So any, anything you want to share about that? What, what, what can you say about that? Um, I think it depends on the company. Some look for niche, some look for sort of a wider, how would you um, be ac accessible to um, more coaches, um, ICF accreditation definitely doesn't hurt. Um, testimonials is huge. I couldn't agree with that more. We actually require reviews to be submitted in the application process um, because we want to hear from the coaches um, or clients uh, directly. Um, and a big thing, like I spend a lot of time looking at people's LinkedIn profiles about how they speak about themselves, how they speak about their experience, because we get asked a lot of times, I, we all know as coaches, you don't have to have been in a specific experience, um, industry, but you know, what have you done? Where did you come from? And how do you, how do you present yourself in all the different channels? Because um, if you come into an organization like ASAP, um, you are now a representative. So it's very important. Thank you, Rich. Okay, so here you have from somebody who works doing that, hiring coaches to work in for their clients. If you can take anything from today's session, I think that take these two things from somebody who is hiring other coaches. Pay attention how you're showing up in your LinkedIn profile. And by the way, 
LinkedIn sometimes came up first than your website. So if you put your name, there is a possibility that your LinkedIn page will come up before your own website. If that's the case, uh, people are going to be looking at you. So you want to spend time in uh, having a video on your LinkedIn page. There are a lot of things that you may need to do to have a LinkedIn that make you look good. So not only your website, but as you can see, these, these other elements are key. Um, and so next, that, that will be the challenge. Now for you in your case, because even though you may not have a lot of experience in coaching, but you do have a lot of experience in intercultural uh, work, and you have a lot of work and experience in leadership, there are companies that are going to be very interested in hiring you. So you have all of that that you're bringing to coaching. So everybody is not only bringing coaching skills, but they're all bringing the old past experience, what you have done in the past. So Leslie, you have done a lot of work on HR. That it's incorrect in, in human resources. So whatever you're bringing from the past, it's going to be applied to when you look for the positions in working for a company that hire coaches to work with their clients. So Artemis, what is the difference, coaches, specialties, and paths we can take to differentiate ourselves in terms of target clients, specialty? Well, this is the same thing that Michael asked. You need to work with a coach to help you to do all of that work. This is customized, individualized uh, work that requires working with a coach, somebody who can help you go through that. Definitely doing a six-month program with experts on these topics uh, can be the next step. Um, so, Rachel, I understand having a website is really more of a credibility piece, just to having our sign up or show people that you are le legit. But I also hear from most coaches, consultants, that beyond this, it doesn't really get utilized much. Is that what you have self experience? Well, as I shared with you, a percentage of my business come through that, but I would say that mainly. It's a presentation card, as you said. So you want to have a good, great presentation card, not a good one. You want to have a great one. The same thing about LinkedIn and, and your LinkedIn profile. Uh, yes, uh, Jerry, I'm going to share the presentation. Uh, Maggie, what uh, has been the tough lesson you have learned through the, your process? Oh, that's a great question, Maggie. What I, what I, what I learned is that learn to enjoy doing this. This is having the great, not, not to resist it. How many of you have a part of you that is resisting it? How many of you have a part of you that is telling you, I don't want to do this? Anybody? Anybody? There is a part of you that says, no, I don't want to do this. Okay. This is going to be in your way. This is going to be in your way. So, uh, and for personal, for personal experience, in my case, I have, I have two supervisors. And I also work in a chain of supervisors where we supervise each other. And I also work uh, with a coach. So, and I have a mastermind group. And in the mastermind group, we all meet once a month and brainstorm ideas and support each other around marketing. So you all want to have that. If I do that, well, I think that I, I, am, I am in a good place, but I still need to do that all the time. So everybody here needs to do that too. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you uh, get engaged in a mastermind group with people thinking about and help and support each other in building. Instead of seeing each other as a competition, you see each other as a supporting system. So Maggie, that will be my number one thing today. If you can get, live here and say, okay, let's work one thing at a time. It feels overwhelming, too much, from the website, from the video, from the presentation, from writing book, it feels too much. From Get a piece of it. Get a piece and work with a piece. One piece at a time. One thing at a time. And do not, don't, don't do it alone. Get another people to work with you. Get in a mastermind group. Uh, Maggie, you at NAS have an amazing cohort of colleagues to do this work, to support each other. Um, so take advantage of that. Take advantage of, of working with your colleagues. Um, let's see. Well, we, have, we need to wrap up here now today because... Uh, we need to start our cohort uh, five uh, session. So we need to finish here. So I want to thank everybody who uh, joined us today. I am going to put in the chat room. Um, you may um, there I put my, my email. If somebody here doesn't have my email, you may want to get my 
newsletter because in my newsletter I am going to share the slides and the video. Okay, so you will find this video of this recording and the um, and also the handouts. I'm going to put it there as a space because here are people from all of the different groups. And then um, I may do another session to follow up in the future to keep talking about this. And I highly recommend that you go to the ICF website and I want to write here the link because I do believe that if you want to invest $300, this is what is the program of the cost, $300, and do the ICF um, class program with all of the different websites, with all of the different key elements, I do believe that that can, um, will make a difference. And I also have a colleague who is doing a program in Spanish from people here who speak Spanish. Um, and she is going to be doing some, something similar to, to the mastermind groups and providing guidance inside the mastermind groups. So in the, in the chat room, I am putting here the information about the business development from ICF. So you may want to copy and paste and learn more about the program for members it's $300 and for non-members of 500. But I think many of you are already members. And um, the other program for the people who speak Spanish here, and I know there are a few who are here today that speak Spanish, there is this other program that provides uh, mentor coaching, a mentoring, no mentor coaching, mentoring a mastermind on building your business in Spanish, a group of four people. So that can be another resource uh, that you may want to explore. So they are doing this for the first time. It's a colleague of mine who invited me and asked me if I can share the information. So you can see this is another example. She approached me and she said, Damien, can you share that? And I said, okay, no problem. I will share with my colleagues. So can you see how this works? It's like I'm supporting her with that. And then in the future, I will share with her other information from that I am doing and she may support me. So we all support each other without any commitment. You know, I'm just sharing information. So thanks everybody for being here today. And before you go, I want to invite uh, for the current program that we are having in, 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 the, in the virtual program number five, we are going to have an open session at the end of the month with a demo on internal dialogue technique. That is an amazing technique. And I think you will love that session. So I want to invite cohort four who are here and people from other cohorts, if you can make it, don't miss it because it's something that I use a lot in my coaching practice. It's really worthwhile, it's going to be really interesting. So with that, uh, it was great seeing everyone. And some of you, see you in one minute because we need to start the other class. <laughs> okay, bye everybody. Thank you, Damian. Thank you, bye. super Thank nice you. seeing everybody. You. Bye. Thank you, Thank you. Have a good session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao a todos. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.